Today on the CTV News at 5, flooding forces for Wubop to close. We got everything evacuated away from the moisture. Our biggest problem is humidity. Why it could be weeks before the gates reopen. Plus, traffic troubles. What an unexpected power outage meant for motorists. And Coolie Fall. A woman is in critical condition after she and her horse fall seven stories down a coulee. CTV News with Jackie Scantlebury. Good afternoon. Crews are working to restore a piece of Lethbridge's heritage. Fort Whoopup National Historic Site was closed because of flooding damage last week. And it reopened for mere hours before being hit again by a storm on Friday night. Alicia Fieldberg spoke to staff who say this flood is 10 times worse. Dozens of dehumidifiers litter the exhibits of Fort Whoopup. Storm water flooded the grounds and building Friday night, damaging the National Historic Site. It's the second time in less than a week the fort's had to shut its doors to the public because of flooding. Last week it was closed for three and a half days. Staff say this closure is expected to last four to five weeks. We had silted water everywhere. Um, this time we have a uh, total submersion in probably 60% of the main facility. 20 volunteers worked quickly to move items into safety when the storm began. No artifacts were destroyed, but several exhibits and store merchandise were ruined. A lot of the flooring had to be ripped out. More exhibits will be demolished to try and save others. We got everything evacuated away from the moisture. Our biggest problem is humidity. As crews are on site working to preserve the fort and many exhibits, two boxes of historical books and archives damaged by the muddy water are in a freezer until they can be restored. The storm water flowed down this hill and was diverted past the area city crews have been repairing a drainage pipe for several weeks. It's the same path water drained last week and caused flooding. Fort staff say the River Valley location has contributed to water damage other times in the past couple of decades, but never like this. These last two events were not river related. And, I mean, these are all things we're going to have to work through with the city and, and uh, make sure that uh, we do the best we can to make sure this doesn't happen again. The closure comes at the fort's busiest time of year. The summer weather and many festivals and events in the area draw hundreds of people to the site each day. Staff say it's disappointing to turn so many people away from experiencing a part of the city's heritage, and they can't wait to put this all behind them. Alicia Fieldberg, CTV News, Lethbridge. City staff expect the drainage pipe repairs to be completed this week. Fort Whoopup employs two full-time and six summer staff, and management hopes to keep them all employed, but because the historical site is federally funded, it will need approval from the government. And a failure at a power substation meant many homes and businesses on the city's south side were without power today. The outage hit around noon and affected a large area. It spread from 15th to 43rd Street South and 9th to 40th Avenue South, causing traffic chaos for motorists. City crews were able to restore power to a large amount of customers by 2.30 this afternoon. They're still investigating what caused the failure. Meanwhile, some East Kootenay residents have been without power since Friday night. That's when a nasty windstorm ripped through the area, knocking over trees and downing hydro lines. Thousands of homes were affected. Now the last customers, residents in Cranbrook and Fernie, should have power fully restored tonight by 6 o'clock. Our Dory Rossiter is back from holidays and you've brought some lovely weather with you, Dory. I really have. Uh, right now, Jackie, we're getting a little bit of a break and, and it's not a bad thing. People like average temperatures. Average for this time of year is 26. So for the next few days, between 24 and 26 degrees, but the weekend is going to be another hot one. Stay tuned. I'll have all the details coming up. Thanks, Dory. A 57-year-old medicine hat woman is in hospital in critical condition after a steep fall down the coolies near Riding on Stone Provincial Park. Police say the woman, who was an experienced rider, was involved in a trail ride in Police Coolie just south of Riding on Stone. The horse she was riding lost its footing, sending both the animal and the rider 
23 metres down to the bottom of the coulee. That's an equivalent of about seven storeys. The woman sustained severe head injuries in the fall and the horse may have landed on her as well. The horse has recovered. It took more than two hours to extricate the woman from the coulee. Members of the riding group were able to place her on a backboard and then lift her out in a basket using a rope. And a 64-year-old Calgary man was killed in a crash east of Cranbrook. It happened Saturday afternoon along Highway 3. RCMP say a westbound sedan crossed the median and collided with a motorhome pulling an SUV. A couple from Oregon was transported to hospital with minor injuries. Police are investigating. And it was a deadly weekend on Alberta's waterways. Two people are dead following two separate accidents. One accident happened just after 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Five young people were jumping from the Ghost Lake Bridge near Cochrane. One man in his early 20s leapt in but didn't resurface. Stars was called out along with RCMP and rescue divers. But a recreational diver jumped into action and pulled the man's body to shore. And STARS was also dispatched to the Highwood River near Longview late yesterday afternoon to help a group of rafters. RCMP say a boat went over a waterfall dumping five rafters into the water. Four managed to get out, but the fifth, a 35-year-old Calgary man, didn't. He was found floating face down in a stream nearby. He was wearing a life jacket and a helmet at the time, but rescue officials say boaters still need to be extremely careful. An 18-year-old Lethbridge teenager was found badly beaten Saturday night by RCMP after coming to the aid of an unconscious woman who was allegedly sexually assaulted. The teen and three other people witnessed a man allegedly sexually assaulting a 20-year-old woman inside a home. And then they tried to chase him out. But that's when the accused started beating the teen with a broom handle. Mounties believe that all parties involved knew each other and were drinking together inside the home when the incident happened. Waylon Almer, heavy head. 33 years old is now facing multiple charges including sexual assaults and bail has been denied for a 29 year old man charged after a man was stabbed in South Lethbridge last week. It happened along 5th Street and 6th Avenue South. The attack left bloodstains on the sidewalk leading away from this home. Police arrived to find a 38 year old man suffering from a stab wound to the leg. Dustin Big Bull faces a number of charges including assault and assault causing bodily harm. He'll make his next court appearance August the 2nd. And a Mexican man charged with a murder in Shaughnessy nearly two years ago was back in court this morning. Luis Ochoa Gomez is charged with second-degree murder in the shooting death of 24-year-old Mario Hernandez Renteria. It happened in the town of Shaughnessy back in October of 2010. Ochoa Gomez was arrested nearly a year later trying to cross the American border into Mexico. Well, he's now on his third lawyer who knew, needs more disclosure time as he works towards preparing documents for a preliminary trial. And that's been set over to August the 13th. A Pincher Creek couple taking their fight with an insurance company across the country now has a settlement offer. We told you about Annie Locke and Dave Barons, last, who last October their home caught fire when Barons' heart condition caused him to pass out while cooking. Well, by the time he came to, their home was largely destroyed. They contacted Cooperators Insurance, their insurance company, and the contractor it hired to do the demolition found asbestos in their home. After the remediation was completed, the couple Senior, hired like their own independent right expert down. who revealed high levels of asbestos still remained. The couple says they sent cooperators their experts report back in March, but since then work on their home has stopped and attempts at communication with cooperators yielded no results. Well, now after our stories by both Kayla Carr and Leah Williams Doherty, cooperators has issued an apology and a settlement offer. They say they hope to have the couple back in their home quickly and safely. Well, the Alberta Electric System operator says a power line that's drawn more controversy than current has been through the appropriate public process and will continue as planned. The 240 kilovolt power transmission line would extend from Pincher Creek to south of Bow Island. Landowners in the area met last week demanding to know if the line was necessary. The group says that yes, it is. Officials say the main driving force behind the line is to bring power from wind turbines to towns and rural properties in the area and is most definitely not intended for power export to the United States. The provincial group also says the line has been put through due process, but feedback from residents is still welcome. The stakeholder input and feedback are extremely important in making sure that we make you know, good choices in how we site and, uh, and route these transmission lines. The Alberta Energy Source operator says that they will continue to work with landowners to find the best route for their line to be built.
Well, if you haven't heard, the Olympics are coming to CTV, and it means a temporary move for our newscasts. Starting on Friday, you'll be able to join us for all your local news, sports, and weather at 6.30. We'll return to our normal time after the Olympic Games. And thousands of people heading to Lethbridge this week for the Alberta Summer Games won't only be seeing sports, they're going to get a real cultural experience as well. Stilt walkers from the Green Fools Theatre will mingle with athletes and spectators during the three-day event. The cultural experience will launch Thursday night and run until Sunday. A gallery hop, art market, live music and theatre, as well as a sports exhibit at the museum, offer entertainment in the city throughout the event. Organizers say it's important to highlight local arts to visitors. Well, it's, it's interesting because Lethbridge is such a dynamic community. We don't just have a really talented sports group. We also have a lot of really awesome and talented uh, artists in our city. So it's important to showcase that when we're having a big event like the Alberta Summer Games. So if you're coming here to check out sports, there's, there's so much more than just sports going on in our city. The opening ceremony kicks off Thursday night at the NMAX Centre. Well, despite a dramatic decrease in attendance numbers, organizers of the Alberta International Air Show are still calling the event a successful one. Despite a beautiful weekend to be outdoors, officials say between six and 8,000 people passed through the gates on Saturday, another 6,000 on Sunday. On an average year, the air show attracts between 12 and 15,000 people per day. Officials say they don't know why numbers dropped off so sharply this year, but say those who were able to make it were treated to a great show and lessons in aviation. The, uh, the highly skilled pilots and their, uh, the nerve that they show in doing what they do. I like it when they like do flips and stuff. Like the one uh, like the make the here. bombs. Lethbridge is Gunners, and it's important for everybody around here to know the uh, military history of uh, Southern Alberta, and we're part of it. And planning for next year's International Air Show has already begun. Organizers say their goals continue to be bigger and better. This weekend's party in the park gave people a chance to enjoy the summer weather and raise social awareness. The Shelter Me Festival in Galt Gardens focuses on bringing the community together for free family entertainment and education. Entertainers and vendors all have ties to social agencies, including the Shelter, Red Cross, and abuse, Substance Abuse Response Team. Organizers say it's important for community members to get to understand each other better. There's lots of stigma um, with this population, so I think that um, it can be very surprising to learn for some people who may not know how amazing these people are and how great and how helpful they are. This is the third year social agencies have held the event. Now to the Marcus today, they took a nosedive as there are concerns that Greece will miss another bailout payment and that six other countries are also in dire straits. Here are the final numbers.